Toño. Hey everybody, it's Andy Kushner, host of The Wedding Biz, and this is another episode of The Next Level, in which a guest co-host and I discuss the most recent interview of the week and bring out a few highlights so that you could use them to bring your own business to the next level. And I want to first mention last week's interview, if you missed it, it was Meryl Snow of Snowstorm Solutions, and Meryl is quite well known in the event wedding catering space. She is the co-founder of Philly-based special event and catering industry festivities events, along with its subsidiaries offshoots decor in philadelphia's picnic company and she's particularly known in the industry as a wonderful wonderful consultant a trainer particularly with sales she's also a speaker event producer designer has think tank workshops so be sure to check that out and sean lowe was my guest co-host on The Next Level, and he is the guest co-host today. Um, Sean's consulting firm, The Business of Being Creative, is focused on providing practical advice to those in the business of being creative. And Sean's client list includes the who's who of the wedding industry and design community. Um, Sean was on The Wedding Biz back in February of last year, and so I want to encourage everyone to check it out. Uh, Sean is a frequent guest co-host. Sean, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm always excited, and back-to-back is is more than fun. Yeah, well, you know, you've got so much to contribute. I I had to have you on this one. So, um, today's guest we're going to be speaking about is David Mann. David is just an incredible planner and designer out of New York City, who does events all over the world. His clients include social leaders uh, from around the world, as well as the who's who of brands and institutions. He has done the Metropolitan's, the Met's annual Costume Institute Gala. He's also done the 100th anniversary of the Plaza Hotel, which was an iconic event in of itself. He's a contributing editor to Departures Magazine, and he's been featured in numerous luxury and lifestyle publications. And Sean, I was able to actually interview David in his apartment. I mean, it was off the chain. It was amazing. Oh, I mean, just by the pictures, it looks like it was just spectacular. Yeah, go to the Instagram and you'll be able to uh, to see it and, and follow us on Instagram at The Wedding Biz. So, one of the main points that immediately, you know, I know that uh, you and I talk about a lot is David said that if you're blessed with a talent and you're unhappy, the reason lies within the mirror, as he said it. It lies within the mirror and you must search that out. And, and I imagine, Sean, with so many of your clients, this is, I know this is the core of a lot of the work, isn't it? Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's about, you know, being proud of what you're doing and knowing that you're serving a purpose and, and yeah, I, it's, it's, it's what we do and to create something that doesn't exist before requires a certain, you know, depth of love and, and just desire to, to share it with the world. And if you don't feel fulfilled by doing that, you, you know, you got to do something else. Well, and it, it, it's so hard. I mean, you know, a lot of people have to deal with pivoting and still staying within that zone of, of, you know, where is my gift? Where is my talent? You know, what is it that really makes me happy? And balancing that with whether it's pressure from family, friends, the industry, uh, fear about whatever's going on. I, I mean, it, it's, it's a tough, isn't that a really hard thing for people to work through? Well, yeah. And I think that, look, it's also, it depends on whatever it is that you must do and must do. But just if you listen very carefully to what David was talking about, he had a huge job. He was, you know, you listen and his company was a very, very big jewelry company and he had 300 people working for him. Um, and so he clearly had a major career happening in, as he was a jeweler and decided that it was, wasn't fulfilling. So yeah, that's a, you know, in, in every way, choosing and pivoting and going to what you most believe you're meant to do is crazy difficult but you know uh, the part that i want to say is like he's uh, had a huge life going on um and to then to say hey i need to go and do the thing that i'm really passionate about which is you know having events for people and and doing that work i thought it was really pretty remarkable well and it changes right it evolves I, yeah. I, I mean you get into one aspect of the industry and then maybe after some number of years or just after realizing maybe some aspect of it isn't really fulfilling and but there's another part that you can get into so i love Love what you're saying, how he did that. You know, also, he was talking about, and I felt that this summed up a great deal of his philosophy in, in event design. He talked about how our senses are what leads us. It's what engages us. And then it creates the experience for us. And I loved, it was kind of a different angle on speaking about it than a lot of people. He was saying that if they're not linked together, it's not complete. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's actually you know incredibly important, and and you know the idea that you have to be fulfilled in all of those different elements. I I, I can agree more. Yeah, they've, they've got to be aligned all along the way. And the touch points, I know before we uh, started to record, you were talking about uh, that with David's interview, the touch points. Well, I think that's a deeper part of what you're talking about. I mean, I think what he's saying is that, that you know, every he wants to touch all your senses. He wants to make sure that everything is in alignment. Um, but then he goes to the larger business aspect, which I think is just so incredible because he built his business on it, um, which is that every event must be authentic. It must be of scale. Um, and it must have detail. Um, and that's what he's living by. Um, and if those three components aren't there for him, he's not really interested when he tells that great story um, when uh, he was in a room and they were talking about, you know, getting excited. And then, of course, someone said, and I want to do kind of the similar thing has been done before and you could, the air goes out of the balloon. Um, right. So he, he really truly is authentic to him means unique. Right. And special. And, you know, when he talks about how he won't look at Pinterest boards, how he's really just wants to know you, right. And know what it is that you're looking to accomplish. That to me is the essence of what I do. Right. And what he's talking about, yes, the linking and making sure that everything is in alignment with the event, of course. Right. But as a business, as a human being and as an artist, he's saying, I need to kind of reach underneath the, the kind of the particulars and get into the energy, which is, of course, what drives his brand and what he was talking about when he talked about lighting and all that kind of stuff. So I, I, was, I was fascinated. Yeah. And when, when you mentioned, you, you just mentioned lighting, you know, that's a really good example of it. I've talked, you know, we've talked to a lot of people about lighting. Obviously, it has a very big influence on how we all feel about the event. Um, David was saying that for him, you know, light in a space is everything. And he was mentioning how Lewis Kahn taught him this, and it's the thing that fuels us. And he talked about it also in terms of the difference between light and illumination mm -hmm. and the emotion of it. Now, I had interviewed, um, y'all got to check out the interview of Ray Thompson if you haven't heard it yet. Um, probably one of the premier lighting designers in the world. Great interview just a few weeks ago. Um, and so, you know, I was kind of all ready when David started to talk about the influence, the emotional aspect of lighting. And I loved how he said, uh, for him, he does not use, he uses almost no LED lighting. He was getting really detailed here because he only uses incandescent or actual flame. You know, a lot of parties of his, are, there's going to be candles, flame all over the place, but either incandescent light or the flame. And this was interesting, Sean. I'm sure you remember he talked about the details, like we are made of energy, yep. atoms in a flesh form, not combustible. You know, we're made of the same energy as, as what that candle flame is made through. It, it, it was just fascinating how he talks about it and how the power of the flame draws us and the incandescent light, same kind of a sense. Oh, the combustibility and the idea that this is to draw you in and to, to have the energy at its highest form before it dissipates and, you know, science notwithstanding, it's, it's, it's the very huge statement of what he's trying to say is like to bring you in and, and to bring in the, you know, kind of the ultimate place of transformation. Um, it, it was, it was huge for him. Uh, and I think that that's, that's why he's talking about lighting. I don't think he's, he is talking about the technical aspect of lighting, but he was really talking about is, is what I think he really does believe is that the flame represents and that burning it represents the greatest essence of transformation there is no yeah. place other to go after it burns other than to another state of being and that's what he hopes for his events right so he's clear about that and i think he truly believes it and i think that that's what makes him great right yeah, I, I love how, you, how you're saying that. And, and look, if you all have not yet listened to the interview, there's if you want to get a lot more detail about this, go check it out because David really dug in. You know, also... Yeah, let me interrupt you one second. I think that, uh, you know, this is one of your longer ones. Yeah. And I couldn't stop listening to it. He's a very, very compelling speaker and a very compelling man. Um, so I would highly recommend listening to the whole thing. And it's just because it, it is actually a story and he tells a very good tapestry and you do a great job of just working through the tapestry of his arc and i think it was really fun well yeah thanks yeah it really was a matter of fact i i've got to do a part two with him because oh, definitely yeah there are other places i want to go with him and and he uh he agreed to that we're going to do it but one of the things that uh, we also got into was how he views business and i loved how again how he framed it he was saying that this was interesting. He wants to be respected for the professional aspect of the business side, even more than the artistic side. Now, I don't know if he literally means that, but the, the point that he was making, the point. Yeah, it's what I talk about all the time. I think that um, what he was talking about 
and what I obviously I've preached since I started the business being creative is that the business itself, the business itself is creative, right? The way it, it comes to be, the way it does what it does is creative in that it does what it does in order to support whatever creative effort is happening. And so what he does in the process of what he does, just to tear it apart for, for 10 seconds, yeah, let's is, do it. you know, the idea that I am certain that he gets paid for the idea of sitting down with you so that you can have that authentic conversation to truly grasp. If you listen to when he was talking about the, you know, we get it in a, in a, in a negative way because it, that ultimately the client didn't want something crazy original, but he had four people in the room listening right? Four people, him, he had his business manager, he had his designer, and another person I think he mentioned. So four people in a room just to listen to that client, right? Mm. So just to get what it really is that they were going to challenge themselves to do so that they could move through that process as a business, right? And I think that's really what it was talking about. It wasn't talking about how much he charges, wasn't talking about in terms of that global high, I charge, you know, X percent or something like that. He never got into that. But what he did say is that he really wants to be on top of his business and the way it works and understanding where he's making his money and being able to communicate that to his clients so that they are very, very comfortable that they know what they're paying for when they're paying for it. So there's no such thing. He didn't go into it in detail, but there is no such thing, I bet, in David Mon's um, equation of saying that, oh, it's in the price, right? So if you're paying for design, you're paying for design. If you're paying for a banana, you pay for the banana, right? So the idea of it is, is that specificity of understanding value as you're delivering it, I am certain is within David's um, bailiwick and his clients are very respectful of that. So more than anything else. Well, yeah. Well, and he said, look, people who are going to entrust him with millions care that mm -hmm. he is as solid as a businessman as they are uh, able to create and spend yeah. it. You know, yeah. you've, yeah, you got a bit. And, and you mentioned how business is creative. You know, there are, I, I remember uh, through all these different interviews, there are a couple of people who, who were talking about um, that perspective on business, which I struggled with a great deal, was not liking that aspect of it. And when I heard people, and now David Mon as well, say, well, wait a minute, the act of, of doing business is a creative act, or let's put it differently, the act of creating business structure is a creative act. Like if you look at business as being creative, like you said, it changes the perspective. It makes it easier to approach it. And then you enjoy it. I've heard mm -hmm. so many people, Sean, on this show, these really successful people say that they enjoy the business as yeah. much as the creative, as the art. They love yeah. the business. Brian Raffinelli rings, rings true for me for that. So does, uh, um, so does uh, David, David Stark, Stark said it. Or yep. even Colin. Colin has really worked hard and is starting to really understand it. So yeah, I think all of them do. And yeah, of course, Preston has, has really come to come to love it. I know that personally. Um, so And he spoke about it on, the, on your interviews. So yeah, I think it's, it's become something where it's not about the idea of taking anything from anybody. It's about being both understanding that you're creating something. Um, so you're getting nourished financially and with with other energy and and support um to do what you do and they are in turn being transformed by what you do um and so it's that mutually beneficial relationship that is with done with deep respect right um i think that though that's why they love it right and it becomes one success leads to the next one leads to the next one so and it just works out right yeah, that's right. Well, you know, we have before we wrap up. Was there any other aspect of this um, interview of the conversation that that also really grabbed you that you'd like to bring up? Yeah, I love the idea of mentors. Right, I love the idea of how he is who's challenged himself to learn right and to what i love to, to say that, that what he wasn't saying specifically but was was really there was that he challenged himself to find great mentors which means you have to have a beginner's mind you have to listen you have to understand that these folks really know and you can take in those that can teach you and give you that confidence to go to the next place to the next place so that you can you know build on each one as you go through your your life right and so to seek people out that can educate you and teach you and and give you you know a perspective on what it is you're going to do so that you're better. I just think is is pretty remarkable. If you listen to a lot of the interviews that you've done, you know there he tells a similar story 
Um, and I love that, right? It's an, it's an evergreen for me. Yeah. And well, and I want to say too, in terms of mentors, I mean, I've had mentors since I was 18 years old. I have mm-hmm. always had at least one, often two, you know, throughout, um, throughout you know, the careers and where I've been in life and as I evolve. And, um, I want to mention to everyone here, Sean, uh, his company is, about mentorship. He is a mentor. And, and I, I want to do a little plug for you, Sean, because oh, you. I know you're, you're very humble about it. But uh, not only can you hire Sean one-on-one, um, he's got something called The Collective, which, uh, Sean, can you give a real quick, quick summary of The Collective? I want to suggest people try that, you know, if they're too hesitant to make a commitment to one-on-one. But tell me about that. Oh, sure. We're a group of uh, all wedding professionals. So, you, you name it, we spend the gamut, um, entertainment, planning, you know, floral, um, and stationery all across the brand. And we come together every week. I write a post every week and we come together every week to talk about various issues. And I record that call. Um, and so what you're left with is like a, you know, call it a, an ultimate podcast with, uh, with really deep liner notes. And we've been doing it for a couple of years now. And there's a pretty intimate group. I don't ever really want it to be more, I, it's not supposed to be more than 40 people. Um, we use, we are comfortable in the twenties and I'm very happy to be there. And we just meet every week and really challenge ourselves to consider what would life look like if we did things, you know, radically authentic, radically true to who you are. And there are no sicker cows. Yeah. I recommend checking out and, uh, let me give all the contact information for, uh, Sean and also for David Mon. First of all, for Sean, it is the business of being creative.com. Again, the business of being creative.com. Uh, for David, uh, gotta check out the site, David Mon. It's two N's, David Mon, M O N N dot com. Uh, David's Instagram handle is david underscore mon again david underscore mon his facebook handle is david mon llc of course as usual all of this is in the show notes at the weddingbiz.com um sean want to thank you again for joining me on the show love having you on that's why i'm having you uh fairly regularly so thank you thank you so much yeah i really appreciate it yeah and also be sure to follow us uh at the wedding biz uh on both facebook and instagram and uh, want to mention that next week's episode is going to be all about Darren Olarsh of On The Move Entertainment, which, of course, close to my heart, being that I have an entertainment company. And so Darren and I had a great conversation. So check in with us next week on The Wedding Biz. 